all right welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll take a look at creating your own sock or system on a chip using the microblaze ip from xilinx it will be running linux and we'll see how all of that is done now i don't recommend taking this exact video as a step-by-step -step guide for this process i'll link a, prop, a few proper guides in the description that explain it in a bit more i'll just go through the whole process and show you guys how it's done so a little bit less um complex than a guide so let's let's start with it let's start by creating a new project you can see already I've, I've done a couple of tests and yes we will be using the rt board the rt atrix a7 uh with 35 uh lus so create a project uh, of course the first step wait for the prompt to come up next uh let's name uh, under the xilinx folder let's name this one hmm. um rt linux youtube because this project's going on youtube so uh that's all good and then we go to the boards and select the rt a7 35 and press next and finish and wait for everything to initialize all right so with that done we don't really have to add any very log code of our own for this to work uh, we can just go with all the ip blocks that are already available all right so let's go and create a block design we'll just call it design one and let it do its thing for a few more seconds and wait for it to complete now uh you can see we have our designs here now in the vivado 2018 um or any vivado ide you can see there's an option called board so if you click here all the peripherals that are already on your board show up this is true for most of the boards although i have seen some boards uh where this doesn't really show up at all so which is a problem but we'll, we'll make it work so the first thing of course we need is the system clock uh, because that's where everything starts so uh, we'll take this this creates um this this takes the 100 megahertz clock creates a few uh, different clocks using the pll's and um, that gives us clock for our system so we'll just wait for this one to and there it is so uh, the next step is to double click this and we can see our IP customization has opened up uh, under clocking options everything is just fine output clocks we need three output clocks the first one is the is 166.667 that's for the RAM the other one is 200 this one's for the AXI bus and the other one is 25 and that's for your um ethernet port press enter you can see that has um been done now uh, under here we need to set the reset type to active low uh, because that's the reset type of all of the rt board click ok and the block gets updated now we can run connection automation here and make sure that the reset pin is set to system reset okay and that is done that's our clock right there next we'll take the clock 3 pin right click and make external and rename this as eth clock that goes to our ethernet uh, phi on board or well, not the phi but anyways um that's done and then we'll add our uh, DDR3 SD RAM block. Uh, this will take a few more seconds. So our sys reset goes to the reset pin right here. All right, so um, our sys clock and clock ref are both populated, so we'll remove those. Uh, the sys clock goes to the 166 megahertz clock, the clock ref goes to the 200 megahertz clock um, and that's that so we are done with that we will now add our um, microblaze ip 
and uh, we have that wait for that to load run block automation and select it as application improve um, increase the local memory and we won't be using ECC and our clock connection should actually be the uh, mix 7 series UI clock uh, 83 megahertz so that's what the frequency our core will run into um, so what happens there is the RAM runs at 166.667 and the core because it's a very simple MMU design the core uh, or very simple memory design the core actually has to run at a one fourth of the memory clock so again this is a very basic design and this is how it's all set up uh, let's just run connection automation not yet go into the micro blaze IP once more uh, and select Linux with MMU and everything else as is just fine select OK and refresh IP catalog because it's asking us to do and then we'll add our Ethernet as well so this is our ethernet stuff um, we'll add the quad SPI flash which is the onboard flash memory click OK and we can just add the four LEDs um, just as, as an example of course we can add all of these IOs as well which I'm going to skip honestly and of course the USB UART uh, because that's how we communicate so once that is done we go into the AXI GPIO uh, part and enable interrupt because we are running Linux and we don't poll for stuff um, and then once that is done we have the Excel concat for our interrupt uh, bits and pieces and I think we should increase it to 3 or 4 um, I think 3 should be fine we'll see how many interrupts we do need so we have one interrupt coming in from the Ethernet peripheral the other one from UART and then we have another one from AXI GPIO and another one from, from Quad SPI Flash so just to increase that to 4 and uh, add the one from Quad SPI Flash on the uh, run connection automation. Uh, we are also forgetting a timer because we need something for timekeeping. Um, An AXI timer here, so we'll add that. Uh, increase the internet uh, interrupt controller uh, concat block with uh, one more port make that 5 the interrupt then connects over there uh, run connection automation um, and then just make sure everyone everything is set to the 83 megahertz clock uh, and here you can see the uh, SPI clock is set to 166 we need to set that to the 83 megahertz clock as well um, and then everything else just make sure is set to that 83 megahertz uh, UICLK clock or oh, click OK and this will take a few more seconds to complete alright so that is done now you can look at your um, IP like this in a bit better manner and right click it you know um, regenerate layout so everything everything kind of fits in properly so you have your AXI peripheral which is kind of a fabric to connect everything to the core um, you have your timer you have your um, few more things here this is the RAM controller your memory controller this is the processor reset system and this here is the memory controller uh, apart from that so this is pretty much done in terms of your SOC so this is a complete design and will boot Linux we need to add the uh, the pins for Ethernet a couple of pins uh, especially the clock ones so we need to tell uh, this ethernet clock just just the one ethernet clock pin uh, which where to actually be so we go back into resources go into constraints here and um, add source so we add a constraint source 
uh, add file uh, actually uh, create a file called eth um, and select ok and finish so we now have a constraints file here and all we have to do and of course you have marked it as eth clock and not ref clock so we'll do that um, there will still be some issues with this if I remember correctly which will come up when we open elaborated design so let's open elaborated design for now um, but before we do we need to take into consideration the converting this into um, HDL wrapper so we let Vivado take care of that and it will start to gen do its thing for a few more seconds alright so the HDL wrapper is generated let's open elaborated design so all of this looks fine so we really didn't have to do that I, I thought I was um, not adding the XCD properly but anyways it's always good to check so we can go ahead now and click on generate bitstream this will run a few more things over again and we can see here in uh, design runs that it's running synthesis design now and then it will run implementation design um, and then finally generate a bitstream so let's wait for that to finish hopefully it will not take too long and once that is done we can get back and build our linux all right so our implement our our bitstream has been generated we can go and see the implemented design uh, just to take a look at what's what and this again is interesting i did the same thing when we were trying the um, the arm cores and uh, let's just take a look at it let's just see what this is all right so you can see the whole sock design as it is or as it would be on the fpga itself uh, and we, we've gone through this before we've seen what this is um, this is how this, this kind of a graphical representation of how the fpga connects everything internally um, you know you have your different LUTs and lookup tables and stuff like that and that whole makes your uh, your design tick um, in that sense and uh, you have some timing details but you can see that we consume 0.888 watts our max time goes up to 29 degrees celsius our thermal margin is at 70.8 uh, degrees celsius and um, yeah we use about 66 percent or around 13,000 LUTs um about 1800 ram um fifo's uh bram dsp 4% io 38% and stuff like that um and of course 20% pll's so we just use one pll to generate our clocks with that said let's go and uh export export hardware include bitstream click okay and